to the CPC public hearing. Julie's going to read the preamble here. Certain meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with House Bill number 58 of the 193rd General Court, which extended the governor's March 12th, 2020 orders suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 30A, Section 20, until March 31st, 2025. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast, unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on the agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. For purposes of in-person attendance, the Town of Deerfield will host the meeting in the room today where we are uh, in the Deerfield Municipal Offices with remote participation details um, on our website. Meetings are typically broadcast on Frontier Community Access Television. Thank you. Okay, so we'll call the meeting to order at 616. Take attendance. Uh, Sean Liddy. Present. Dan Benson. Present. Frank Leone. Present. Julie Caswell. Present. Lily Dwight. Present. And Kathy Sylvester. Present. So the notice is hereby given that the Deerfield Community Preservation Committee will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, March 27th, 2024 at 6.15 p.m. on CPC funding proposal application phase one, preservation and restoration of the Augustus Vincent Tack, quote, the deposition from the cross, unquote, oil on canvas painting presented by Friends of Deerfield. Guidelines for the public hearing or speak one at a time, follow the Deerfield Code of Conduct, be respectful, considerate, courteous, concise, and recognized by the chair. We're gonna start with Mr. Harris giving a presentation. After that, we ask public comments. You would come to the mic, state your name, your address, hold it to one comment per person, preferably and try to limit your time to about three minutes. Mr. Harris, do you want to give your presentation? Yeah, um, I need to have access to screen share. Screen share, how can we do that? Can you do that, Pat? You're muted, Pat. Can you try it now? Okay, I think I think we can do it. Casey said if you were a co-host, it should work. Um, there you go. Does everyone see this? I'm trying to blow it up full screen. Yes, we can see it. Okay, so thanks for having us and, and taking this time. And this has been this presentation, which is I think is seven slides is been widely circulated and probably you've already seen it as a committee also but um <clears throat> but i'll just i'll just step through it because the whole idea is question and answer more than presentation here um so th this this is all about this painting i mean it's specifically on the screen um and it is one of a unique mural of uh, Augustus Vincent Tack's work, which spanned a lot of other portraits and famous portraits actually of the president during um, Truman's era and his advisors and everything like that that's in national museums. But he did a few murals. He did murals in the, um, in the um, <clears throat> Nebraska state capital, um, but he did a few, um, if you will, religious theme murals also. And this just happens to be the one that was created in Deerfield for Deerfield. Um, <clears throat> but his work goes way beyond that. He was pretty prolific, actually. So 
just a little bit for the people that are attending, because I assume there's some people in person and other people online. I, I don't have a you know inventory of who all those persons are, but just to be um, just to be um, you know kind of giving a background here. The Friends of Deerfield is a 501c3 nonprofit that was established in December of 2020. Our initial focus was on the 350th um, <clears throat> celebrations and events, if you will, commemorations. And um, we, um, yeah, but we always set up that nonprofit to be able to do other projects on behalf of the town of Deerfield going forward. So the focus initially was that. Um, the data here is clear. Um, we, we've raised nearly $150,000 towards 350th events. Uh, the list of events here is is uh, fairly complete, and, um, and we're documenting those and cross-checking those with the 350th Steering Committee for the annual town report. Um, and, uh, but, you know, we did a good job involving businesses, uh, private sector institutions and and um private entities in the town of deerfield some which were you know we've we've shown their logos others which wanted to keep um private to be perfectly honest anonymous and the same with individuals there's been a mix of you know named individuals as well as anonymous individuals and uh but that was all deerfield and um <clears throat> and so this is you know, we have a track history of being able to raise money with a compelling story about any project. And uh, right now we have little in the bank, but that was planned. That was planned actually. And because, um, you know, fundraising going forward is, is you know, new projects and well-defined projects, et cetera. So um, the last big expense we'll incur is the, Probably on June 8th. I, actually, I think we finalized that earlier this week. It will be June 8th. And we'll bury the time capsule, but we'll also do um, refreshments and other activities in conjunction with the Recreation Committee and the 350th Steering Committee. And that'll be the last big spend that effectively is part of the 350th commemoration year. About the painter, I mean, this is, um, you know, out of, um, you know, you can talk to all the experts, and I'm not an expert on, on the art um, history of Deerfield, but uh, for sure, this painter, Augustus Vincent Tack, who's buried in Laurel Hill Cemetery in Old Deerfield, was one of the three most um, prominent American painters that lived and worked in Deerfield. And he used to live there about six months of the year. And then he had studios in New York City and Washington, DC. Um, later he had stu the studio in Washington, DC, and he was capturing portraits and scenes from the Oval Office, from you know President Truman's um, situation there. Um, he died in 1949, so you can imagine it was pretty impressive to document the former president during that era post-World War II. Um, <clears throat> the art in, in the application we submitted, uh, there's a lengthy list of all the exhibitions where his art was shown around the world. Um, and... He's in, you know, his paintings and sketches are in numerous museums, um, major museums that are listed here. Uh, there's no doubt about it. He was influential and um, well-known and renowned painter and um, artist in American history. Um, and he just happened to spend a big chunk of his time in Deerfield. And so he's prominent in Deerfield also. Um, and like I said, He's buried with his family, and there are no heirs beyond the daughter and son. Uh, he's buried in Laurel Hill Cemetery up near Eagle Brook in Old Deerfield. In terms of the painting, um, the painting um, obviously has a religious theme. There's no doubt about that. I mean, that's, you know, I'm not going to, but the painting is historic, 
in for its value as part of a portfolio of work of a of famous American artist. And uh, his murals are rare. I mean, I mentioned murals in uh, 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 Nebraska's uh, state capital. I mean, they're in Canada also. They're elsewhere, but they're kind of rare in terms of his whole portfolio of work. So most of the work that's held by um, by museums in Deerfield, PVMA and Historic Deerfield, but also by the major museums in New York City and, and Washington, D.C., have nothing to do with this mural. So this mural is um, somebody's trying to get in, just so you know, Pat, so you have to admit them, or maybe I can do it. Okay, anyway, I clicked on it. Um, but, um, but you know, so, so this is a historic painting, and it's part of a portfolio, a vast portfolio of work that's in different museums, both in Deerfield and uh, around North America. I, I don't really think his paintings are are in museums in Europe. Um, I could be wrong on that, but but it, he's it, it's really in North American museums, and um, and uh, the murals are rare. And this was a rare uh, mural that was painted and created in Deerfield for Deerfield, and and it hung in a former church for eighty four years. So so that's the background behind this painting. Um, uh, this, th this, this painter, this artist, was not necessarily focused on religious themes. He just happened to do some of them. And we have one of the rare um, products of, of his portfolio in Deerfield. Um, and we've had it analyzed initially because it's in temporary storage in the former St. James, we've had it analyzed by professionals and it's totally restorable. And, um, uh, you know, and it's 100 years old. So obviously there's some work that needs to be done on it, but but I mean, it's it needs to be restretched if nothing else and cleaned. It's, it has a lot of grime on top of it just because it's been exposed to, to the, um, elements over the years um and not a lot of filters and you know it's not like we had hyper filters back then you know um it, when it was first put up so and this painting just to be very clear is owned by the friends of deerfield a 501c3 nonprofit. um so about phase one i mean preservation restoration of the painting it's very important to do this phase one to figure out exactly what the scope of the real work and the real money is going to be. And so we need to get it out of its temporary storage. And that, you know, has some complexity and costs associated with it and get it up to Williamstown Art Conservation Center. Uh, and then they will do laboratory analysis on it, following up their preliminary work that they've already done. And um, and then we'll know the true cost of what it's going to take to clean, do in painting, reinforce the canvas if there's any weak areas, um, and then re restretch it over a totally different frame than what it's on. It's it's on a totally flimsy, actually broken frame uh, that's just not acceptable at all, and. Uh, um, and, and certainly not sustainable. Um, and, and there'll be different types of frames that they might recommend. I mean, it's technically, it's very complex. Sometimes they do it in sections and you can adjust each section to stretch that area of the frame a certain way. Um, we don't know. We don't know what we don't know. And so the experts need to tell us that. And, um, and so... That's what the deliverables of phase one are. They're, um, <clears throat> they're um, you know, the scope of work and cost for cleaning, restretching, and overcoating. And when I say overcoating, they, they often put a kind of a lacquer shellac over the canvas to, you know, to prevent dust intrusion and abrasion. And uh, that was never done, obviously, 100 years ago. They do that now. Um, 
you know, and and then the whole wood frame aspect and restretching and the complexity of that actually will determine weights and dimensions and things like that in terms of how we can redisplay this. So there might be restrictions on redisplay or there might be flexibilities on redisplay depending on what they come up with, but they need to assess that canvas and none of us have qualifications to do that at this point. Um, so, so in terms of speaking about phase two, which will inevitably be the highest cost part of this project. And, you know, we've friends of Deerfield have received, you know, cost estimates, their ballpark in the range of 35 to $50,000 um, to do all that work. And it will span eight to 12 months, by the way, it's not, it's, this is not trivial to do this. Um, when they did the restoration on the, Last supper in in uh, Milan, Italy, it took it took two or three years, I believe, that project. And but it was in on site there, and um, so but we have to defer to the experts on that uh, in terms of what it's going to take. Um, the friends of Deerfield had a concept, and we're working on a concept of kind of a mobile rotating display to get maximum um, exposure in different venues across the town of Deerfield. Uh, and, you know, so that so they could put it in front of all different types of ages and groups and et cetera. Some of the experts are coming back already and saying, that's not a great idea. That's not a great idea. Uh, because the, the assumption is that once Williamstown you know, weighs in on what they need to do with the canvas and how they're going to restretch it and, 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 you know, preserve it is you don't move it around that much. I mean, that's probably going to be the recommendation. We need to wait on that expert advice, but already there's a, a you know, and John Davis from a president of historic Deerfield isn't able to be with us because he has another board meeting for the Western Massachusetts um, conser conservation uh, board that he's on. And he has, he's tied up in Springfield this afternoon, this evening. Uh, but he's, he's weighed in too that he doesn't think that's the greatest idea is to move this thing once we do it. Um, so, so as much as that's a nice concept, uh, it's probably not um, the way that we go, depending on what Williamstown tells us also. But we've had a couple opinions that are saying, yeah, you don't want to move this thing once you do all this stuff. And But the one thing we will do is we will photo and video document the entire preservation process from beginning to end. And that's educational in and of itself, never mind the panels that we'll have on it uh, in terms of uh, about the artist and his connection with Deerfield and, you know, the history of his connection with Deerfield and the works that exist still in Deerfield collections. Um, and so we'll, you know, we'll do a great job on that side of it. Um, and if we think about some of the places we're thinking about where it could be even permanently, um, obviously historic Deerfield and PVM, PVMA come to mind, but we're working on, you know, just logistically, where would we put this thing? And, and of course, if we can float it out in the middle, not in the middle of a room, but away from a wall, we can put all the information on the artist and, and his, uh, his impact on American art history and his um, role as a leader in the Deerfield community, we can put that all on the back and probably save space also. So these are all the things that are, you know, being discussed, but we need Williamstown to weigh in, in terms of how this thing will be, you know, preserved and restored and restretched and what the weight and the mobility of that whole assembly will be. And we don't have that information. That's why there's a phase one, because we can't get to phase two without a phase one. And phase two, to me, um, 
is obviously it's clearly for the friends of Deerfield more expensive, but I think we know where to go in the private sector to get those funds. And I think that as long as we have good definition from phase one, um, we can we can get people that have been historically interested in this paint in this artist and have done displays in Deerfield in the past, going back to 1968, um, we can get them involved and we can get them funding this project, but we need that initial definition, that initial work of phase one, and we need to show them that the town of Deerfield and a few individuals, which by the way, I'll be honest with you, friends of Deerfield already have money coming in against the phase one. And uh, and if we can show them that type of commitment to launch it and to get this definition of the bigger project, I'm pretty optimistic about phase two in terms of fundraising and funding this and then being able to tell the whole history story of this painting, but the history of the painter also, the artist, and the connection to the Deerfield arts community and the Renaissance that occurred in the late 19th century, early 20th century. I'm very confident that we will get substantial funding for that from the outside, from across the country. But we need to take a first step and that's phase one. And so here's, you know, the last slide here is just some comments from i'll call these people experts they're experts they're not they're not friends of deerfield and you know but john davis president of historic deerfield is there like this guy is truly singular in the history of american art tim newman has weighed in and i believe he's on on this uh, meeting um he's an important historical figure in our town I mean, not only did he paint here, and the, there's lots in the collections here, but he also consulted with different buildings, et cetera, and different renovations of buildings, uh, including the Brick Church up in Old Deerfield. So not just St. James down in South Deerfield. Um, so he, he obviously, and he's buried in Deerfield. So he clearly, clearly is connected to Deerfield in a special way. And then... Um, John Novi has weighed in as uh, chair of the Deerfield Historical Committee. And this is a painting that was created in Deerfield for Deerfield. And so there's just so much history around it. It would, it would be a shame to uh, neglect it and let it go away. So that's all I have to say, because I know that Kathy wants to do question and answer more than anything. Thank you, Mr. Harris. So um, now we would take public comment. Again, if you could try to limit your comments to about three minutes, one person, one comment per person, if possible. So anybody have anything to say? Sure, would you go to the mic and introduce yourself and where you live, please? My name is Tom Clark. I live at Three Road, up in the corner of the Walton Road. And um, I guess my question is, where are we going to go with this? I, I'm very supportive of, of work being done. There's some of what the town can do with it. So there's a 13 by 8 foot piece of artwork, which should be displayed in a room that the community for all of know without direct come up. And that once you, if you spend $60,000 going to keep the piece of artwork, uh, what would I guess what we're going to call it, $60,000 in our career. I'm very supportive of just uh, preserving this piece of work. I just wonder what we're going to do. Mr. Harris, do you want to respond to that? Um, Kathy, can you repeat you repeat the question? Yeah. Because it was hard to hear it. Oh. The, mic, the mic is not working, so it would be great if you could repeat. Okay, thank you. So the question was, um, he's very supportive of the project, but he wants to know where we're going with it, that the painting needs to be in a climate controlled condition. Um, so what would the plan be? Am I, am I saying that right? 
Is there anything else you want to add? I want to go to the mic though. Yeah, and hopefully it's working now. <laughs> so get right up to it. Yeah. It's not on. How about if we come on to the Yeah. See if that's on. What's going on? Or you can give them one of our <laughs> Yeah. This is this is simpler. No, I guess uh, you know. I just want to know where we're going to go with this. It's a it's a it's a religious piece, and we are a, a community that's not religious in the, the town. And there is you got to walk carefully what you got to do and where you're going to display it in town buildings. That's my that's another question. Um, but I think it ought to be conserved. Well, what are we going to do with it? Who's going to do something with it? Whether you know, I, I don't think it's 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 a good idea to move it around. No, I I second that. You know, I've I've got a bachelor of fine arts degree. It wasn't in painting, but it was in other works, mm -hmm. and I have a little bit of experience in it. And um, the last time I believe the town did anything with a with a mural was when we built the elementary school. We put a mural in that the town. It, actually, historic Deerfield paid for that mural. And, and it, it would be nice to have public works of art around in our buildings, but I don't know if this is appropriate. All right. Do you have a comment, Mr. Harris? Yeah, so so it, it does look like, to, sir, that um, that moving it around is probably not a great option, uh, given the sheer size of this campus um, and its age. And so... Um, the leading candidates right now, and that's discussion in terms of scouting out exactly space, would be PVMA and Historic Deerfield. And so, and both of those places are very favorable to um, town of Deerfield residents in terms of free admission and open, open access. And so that's where we're gonna have to go, but we also wanna hear from Williamstown in terms of exactly how this thing's going to be restretched and it can be repositioned, if you will, or, or redisplayed um, uh, in any of these venues. But I talked to, um, you know, the, the executive director of PBM, Tim Newman, who's on, and, and they're like, we need this like to be in one of your outbuildings, not even in the main Memorial Hall. And it's a special exhibition. Um, I, same with John Davis. Obviously, you can't go in any of the museum houses because their ceilings are too short. They're, they have no wall space. They can't ever display this in any of those. They, it can only be in the Flint Center. And so so we, we're, we're talking about options there also. And, um, and so far, there's no no's. It's just, you know, discussions about what are we going to do in the end. Okay. But there's people? a lot of support for per, per, preserving painting. And I believe that if the town works with a few local people now to launch phase one, it's a big momentum to finding a house for it and to going out of major fundraising to restore it. And that the bill to the town will be minimal in the end. Thank you. We have another question. You come up to the mic and just introduce yourself and where you're from. Hi, Erica Higgins Ross, Greeno Crossing Road, Deerfield. Um, I really actually enjoyed hearing about this painter. I know nothing of this painter, and I'm an art, also a big fan of art, so it's nice to hear about this. However, this is an extremely um, graphic religious iconography. Um, and to me, as a member of the LGBTQIA community, and in terms of just my experience of walking into buildings where there is overtly Christian um, iconography. It's not a comfortable thing for me. Something I love about Deerfield is that I feel like our civic life is really inclusive and we're working really hard on that. And so I don't, um, an, something that has been created for a tax exempt church organization and is going to be hung in a tax exempt nonprofit organization. I don't understand why the town would be paying our tax money to restore this. I really support a, a nonprofit doing this work. And I think there, will be, like you said, there will be lots of people who will be excited to support it. 
but for those of us who feel um, like it's, we're really moving ahead in this town feeling um, included in a way that I think my family has not traditionally maybe felt included. It's very important to me that we don't move backwards and put um, a religious iconography up that will make some people feel less included. And that isn't just LGBTQ, that is anyone who doesn't um, consider Jesus their savior <laughs> and anyone who for that is not their story. So thank you. Thank you, Annalie. Thank you. Annalie Wolf Cool for Mountain Road, South Deerfield. Um, I'm also in opposition of this project. Uh, my understanding, I'm certainly not a legal professional, but my understanding of the anti-aid amendment of the Massachusetts Constitution is that there is a requirement, a very clear requirement, that public benefit um, must occur if any public firm um, funds are awarded to a private organization. The fact that Friends of Deerfield is a nonprofit, that has to do with their tax status. That doesn't have to do with whether or not they are public or private. Um, this, it's, it's nice that the organization has raised money, and I, we certainly are appreciative of that. But again, uh, that doesn't negate the fact that they are, at least in my understanding, a private organization. And as such, the Massachusetts Constitution requires that funds that are awarded to a private organization um, must clearly benefit the public. Um, I think that the benefit to the public in this situation, both in phase one and especially in phase two, is very weak. Um, and I personally would be quite offended if my CPA con contributions would go towards a private project such as this. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Olivia Leone, uh, King Philip Ave. Um, I am not opposed to this project, but I have like a technical question because I'm on other boards and sometimes you need to, in order to complete the application, you need to have um, somewhere where this is going to be. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't know, I, I'm a, I don't, is that true for this or can it be more um, open-ended as they're suggesting? Like for me, it matters if we're holding everyone to the same standard and if uh, all these boxes need to be checked in order for different groups to get CPA funding, then I think that needs to be true for Friends of Deerfield, even if it's a Deerfield painter, even if it's a beautiful work of art, um, even if it absolutely should be restored and displayed somewhere. I think that um, if the filling out of the application is not complete in the way that it needs to be, um, and it seems like, and I could be completely wrong, but it seems like we have options, right? for what might happen after it's um uh you know refurbished but that because you're not sure how big or small it's going to be that you're not sure exactly where it can be located uh, but i think anyone who's spoken including mr harris said that it needs to be somewhere like one place particularly that is climate controlled um and if we don't have that place um i would not feel comfortable committing town dollars to something where we don't have a specific end of a place that feels comfortable to everybody like a town building. So, thank you. I didn't get her name. Hi, my name is Annette Fenderbecker. Oh, I'm just going to... Oh, I'm just going to... Go ahead. Sorry. Hi. My name is Annette Fannebecker, 8 Baker Lane, South Deerfield. Um, I guess I have some questions about the commission of this original painting, and I, it sounds like it was originally made for the church. Is that correct? Um, and, I'm assuming that, but I wasn't I, there a hundred years. And I understand I did a had a fun afternoon looking at Auguste Vincent um, tax uh, art this today. He was good at landscape. He had, was proficient in landscape art, pro portrait art, and his abstract art was was amazing. I also know that he has collections of art 
in several, but many museums that you mentioned. His, he, there's public collections of his art in the Brooklyn Museum, Harvard Museum, Metropolitan Museum of Art, National Gallery, and other collections around the country, as you mentioned. And I would think that they would actually be interested in a painting like this. Um, I want to thank you for all the help that the uh, Friends of Deerfield have contributed to our town under your mission statement of uh, engaging, education, entertaining, and um, bringing community pride. I think that this project, I question whether it falls under the um, prospects of the CPA money. I mean, money that we've delegated in town has gone to projects in town that have benefited the public. I know the steps at the Old Deerfield Museum, the I think uh, cemetery stones. I, I don't feel that this project actually qualifies. And if it is CPA money, that has to come before town meeting anyway. This doesn't, we don't decide this. The town decides this. Is that correct? So, um, well, we are going to, we're going to address some of your questions in our deliberations, but in terms of if we recommend it, it goes to town meeting. If they and wouldn't go to other committees too, like the finance committee mm -hmm. and all that stuff? No. Okay, well, I think um, that if you have, as you stated, a very good track record of getting monies, that you could benefit by getting monies through private donations, donor donations, grants. And I understand why you would like to save this work of art. I understand that. As far as its historical benefit, it would be um, that that remains to be determined and it's subjective as far as it relates to the public use of the town's money. And if it was on a on a, uh, a project, um, it would be on a lower level. We have so many things going on in town that we need the money for that this would be, this would be, I put it down on the list quite a bit because we have other things to do. So um, I guess that's it basically. So. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Is there anybody uh, online so that? What kind of? Yeah, her name either. Oh, would you repeat your name, please? Annette Cannon. Can Annette. you spell your last name? Always. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I got as far as P F A N N. Sorry. P F A N N U S O I D C K. Thank you. Thank you. I'll set then. Okay. I hope so. Thank you. Um, is there anybody online that has a question? I don't see anybody raising their hand, so just want to give you the opportunity. Anybody else in the audience here in Town Hall? Okay, so we have one. Tim Newman. Yeah. We have one on Tim. I'm so sorry, Mr. Newman. You have to oh, you muted, Tim. Hello. Um, I just want to point out history is uh, always a moving, moving uh, story. And I, I sympathize with the people in the audience that are uncomfortable with the religiosity of this painting. But actually, to me, it is a symbol of uh, tolerance. Uh, at the time this was painted, it was very unusual for a Catholic to be married to a Protestant. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this case, Mr. Tack was devoutly Catholic, um, but he married into the Fuller family, who were uh, very strong Unitarians uh, at the Brick Church. Um, and he brought his talents to town, and he came as a young man, and he slowly built his reputation and became involved in the town. There have been artists that have come and gone and have different reputations, but he was not mainstream. That, that It's hard for some of us today to realize that being a Catholic in a Protestant area in the early 20th century would be held against you, but it's a theme of New England history. Uh, those Puritans didn't come here for the freedom of religion. Uh, they came here for their Puritan faith. So for it to move to this wonderful story of a man, young man married into a very prominent, the Fullers were extremely uh, important with connections and, and were interrelated with all the power mongers of, of, of Massachusetts at that time. In fact, they spent a lot of their time, not all of them, but many of them in Boston. Uh, so these were leading uh, Puritan-based 
uh, families. And at the same time that uh, Mr. Tack was doing this painting for the Catholic Church uh, here in South Deerfield. Uh, he was also working with the First Church of Deerfield, uh, the, the present day uh, brick church, in redoing its building and uh, taking it back to some of its earlier forms. It had been Victorianized. So he was welcomed into that. Uh, the power center of the brick church, as it were, those families, and they followed his advice. And the brick church interior that you see today is largely his work. Um, so for me, and I'm I'll, in full disclosure, I'm a member of the brick church, so that, that's meaningful to me. But it's a story that, because we avoid talking about religion, that it any progress towards tolerance and and welcoming um, gets lost in the memories of the harshness uh, of that many people suffer. So I'm not discrediting any of the statements that people said, but there is this other story. And one of the problems as an educator, um, museum educator that I have been, is some of our stories are so difficult that they're hard to, to bring into the schools. We do a lot of work with the schools and the school children. And anything that borders on discussion of religion and religious intolerance is seen as inappropriate. So we have a huge number of uh, in this country of, of citizens um, that don't understand uh, that um, we were once a very, very religious society that um, had it out for Catholics, for one. Um, but in any case, I'll, I'll end with, I just, I don't, I don't want to um, undermine anyone else's uh, uh, thoughts on this. In, in terms of getting a project running and getting grants. Um, I've brought millions of dollars to this town in grants in federal and state. Um, uh, so I have a lot of experience in that. And, and Chris Harris is very right. Your community has to show some tangible support when you go to big corporations or millionaire people um, because they're constantly being approached with people with their hands out asking for, for money. So you, they want to feel like their money that they're donating does have some support. So if the town were to do this project, um, that could be could be leveraged. Um, and I would also point out that over time, um, funds across the, the, the state have been allocated to collections like PVMAs that has a lot of religious material. If you look at, if you were to come and look at the papers, ministers were important, their papers were important, the church records were the town records, the baptismal records uh, were were the equivalent of uh, birth certificates. Um, you could put your name in a Bible on your birth date and that was your birth certificate. So saving religious objects is not in itself um, uh, something new um, and undermining of other, other faiths um, if it's handled properly. But thank you. Thank you. Okay. Denise Mason, 297 Lower Road, Deerfield. Um, I'm just feeling a little uncomfortable. I mean, I feel a little uncomfortable about the religious aspect, but I think even more so than that, I think with CPA projects that we've done in the past, they have a permanent place. Um, for instance, I know one that came before you, because I was on that meeting, came before you was the, um, I think the floating dock for the Tritown Beach. That's a floating dock. We know where that's going to be. You know, we know, we know where these things are going to be. And I feel that this is, that you're bringing this to us. Um, I think it's premature since you don't have a place. I know Mr. Newman is on. I don't know if you would commit, and I would like to see that in writing, whether it's from Historic Deerfield or PVMA. Where are you going to put this? And I'd feel a lot more comfortable knowing that. And then once you do that, and then you take it to Williamstown and find, oh my God, it's gonna cost $70,000 to do this. Do you really feel comfortable raising that amount of money? And where, I mean, you know, Mr. Newman says that he's very good at getting grants. So, I mean, I think there are a lot of unanswered questions that I'm just not feeling very comfortable. So, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Any questions from the committee for Mr. Harris?
So I did get a letter. I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, Lily, do you have a question? Yeah, oh, um, I guess actually I, I had written one down so I wouldn't forget it, but um, Denise just asked it because oh. it was about um, if Mr. Newman is here, if, um, if I, I would like to know the commitment, I mean, the likelihood of this has to go someplace, as everybody's saying, and, and it can't go to Treehouse because you have to pay money to get in there. And so using public monies. Um, so then I'm just wondering, um, I don't know if it's fair to ask Mr. Newman, he made the mistake of being here, <laughs> to ask him if, if it's a 90% um, a chance that they can take it or what are we looking at? Yeah, she's asking you, Mr. Newman, you can unmute. Well, at the moment, our building is not the best place for it. And I would be, I don't want to put the other organization, the larger organization with the larger space on record. Uh, you'll have to ask uh, John Davis about that. I do know that John Davis uh, has his PhD in uh, 19th century American art. Um, that's his, one of his main interests. And I know he has um, plans for extensions on some of the buildings here in town. And um, they're doing a show of the same period, another uh, Deerfield artist, Champney, this coming fall. So there's an institutional uh, interest there. Uh, I also, and I don't know how the, the town feels about it, but I also um, would think that the Academy ha has a very strong part of this story. The, one of the places where this painting was worked on was the little brown house on Albany Road. And many of the people that uh, Chris Harris is thinking of asking for funding. Um, and I know how generous the Academy can be when asked to use their space for different things. Um, they also have an art collection. They have an art museum as part of the Hess Center. Um, and I know how generous they can be because I just recently had uh, the, the big talk we had on uh, the 1704 attack uh, a couple of weekends ago. And if I had to rent that space of that size and all the facilities, um, it would have been a fortune <laughs> to put that on. Uh, but in terms of uh, PVMA being the, the smallest entity that has a real interest in the, the story, um, I would certainly work with the, uh, John Davis on finding it a permanent home if they were able to. The, the size of it is a challenge. Um, and I think the the question that, that Chris says that they're trying, will be getting an answer to is can it be freestanding? Because we do have some fil facilities where we've had um, um, the old grammar, so the, the former grammar school would not be a good permanent home, but it, we have had serious art shows in that space, even though it was a, it looks a lot like the town office space there. Um, so I'm, I'm not trying to be evasive. If you wanted it in Memorial Hall, it just would not fit. Um, the other thing, and we're, we have a committee working on this, and I cannot speak definitively, but the old town hall has been a project of PVMA for 20 years that we've been trying to find the funding to turn it into something. And it, that space is much larger. Um, um, many of you probably not have been in, inside of it, but it's is, um, got lofty ceilings and that type of thing. So there are there are options that that um, friends of Deerfield are ex that are serious serious uh, community groups that take their roles. Um, as educators and preservationists very seriously. Um, so I think unlike if we were a smaller town, Conway or, or uh, Williams, Bill Williamsburg, uh, we have the institutions that can rise to that. I just happen to be the smallest one. Uh, so that's, so, but it does really have my support, but thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Yeah, one more. Um, I'm just wondering if it's possible if um, you could get the initial funds fundraised to start the project, and then that would give you time to find a suitable home for it, and then come back to the CPA, the CPC, and look for funds after that and helps with the restoration. Is that a possibility? 
So, I mean, the strategy here is to show initial community support between the town and individuals in the community, and then to go out for bigger fundraising uh, for phase two. I mean, that's our strategy. And, you know, my experience says that works. Yes. Thank you. Thirty-seven hundred and something. Yeah. Quick. So, sure. So none of the places that were mentioned are public. Uh, the town hall was mentioned. I don't know that anybody in the town hall has agreed to have the painting. No, Chris. No, actually, actually, because that was like one step in a kind of rotating display. And okay. since the experts are starting to come back and saying that's probably not a good idea to move it around, then the town hall would not be uh, would not be a candidate. The okay. museums are the most lo logical candidate for them, and they're open to the public. And in most cases, they're open free to the public. I believe that's right. I didn't hear that, Kathy. What, what was oh, that? Sorry. Go you, to the mic. Yeah, I've got it the mic and say it. Thank I you. I just wanted to say it sounds like the places that are currently possible are somewhere in historic Deerfield, but there's nowhere right now that could accommodate it that they've figured out. And then uh, it was mentioned Deerfield Academy, which is a not a tax exempt private um, school in our town with a billion dollars in assets. So just clarifying those were the places that. Yeah, so Deerfield Academy would have been on the list for a revolving display um, to expose their students and their faculty, et cetera, to it. But that can't be a permanent place for it. Okay. That's just, that, that is just out of the question. So the museums are more likely, obviously, because the throughput of traffic, both from the town as well as from outside the town is very hot, you know, relatively speaking. But no, we never considered Deerfield Academy as a permanent place. We only brainstormed it as a place where it could rest for two or three months. Thank you. If there's no other questions or comments, I, I have something to read from a resident that sent us her thoughts. Um, Andrea Leibson says, I'll be out of town on Wednesday and so cannot attend the public hearing, but want to share my two cents on the question of using CPA money to restore a privately owned painting. I'm opposed. Deerfield has limited funds and I don't think it is appropriate to use funds for the purpose of restoring a painting that is privately owned. Thanks for the work you do on behalf of the citizens of Deerfield. So if there's no more comments or questions, I would uh, request a motion to close the public hearing. Do you have to ask Erica, can I get the spelling of your last name, please? Yes. Uh, and then Higgins Ross. Higgins Ross, thank you. <clears throat> I, I move that we close okay. the public hearing. I have a second. I'll second that. Frank Sexton said, section. Second said. Um, okay, uh, those in favor, Lily Dwight. Aye. John, Libby. Aye. Ben. Aye. Ben? Frank. Aye. Lily. Aye. And Kathy. Aye. Uh, so uh, now we're going to be doing our deliberation, so we won't be taking any more comments from the public or the applicant. Um, so I want to just start by saying to the committee that you know, we um, consulted with town council and with Stuart Saginaw, the executive director of the Community Preservation Coalition in Boston. And the issues that have come up with both of them was one, the private ownership. <clears throat> and though it's a 501c, it's still a private ownership of the painting. So the town would not have control necessarily of what happens to that painting, um, even if it is put 
in a museum if that at some point they decided they wanted to sell it, it would be belong to the Friends of Deerfield or whoever they gifted it to. Uh, the religious nature came up, but <clears throat> again, I think that it obviously has some historic value. I think Mr. Harris has done a great job in showing us that, um, and it has some value to to a lot of people in the community. Um, but there's a lack of assured public benefit, which I'll say came up with <clears throat> town council and Stuart Saginaw. So ideally, they both said it would be good if the painting was owned by a public organization. If it was given to the town, then the town owns it, the taxpayer owns it. We can do what we want <clears throat> with it. Um, uh, otherwise, with a private organization, if there's no public benefit, um, you really can't use CPA funding to support it. Uh, so it requires a place for public viewing. And this is an eight foot by 16 foot painting or mural really. And I think, I know that the Friends of Deerfield and Mr. Harris have worked a better part of a year or more on this project and have not found a permanent place for it. So that concerns me. Um, and I think at this point, my opinion is not really ready for CPA funding. I think that the uh, Friends of Deerfield, being that they are a fundraising organization, could maybe raise a small amount of money. And then at some point in the future, if you have a more definitive plan, I think the CPC would be open to hearing um, more about it. So that's my two cents. I want to ask the committee what they think. I'm going to start with Sean. Uh, you know, sure. You have some comments? Yeah. I just, first, I'd like to thank the, the public for coming out. Um, I thought you were really on point, um, and I appreciated all of your comments. I want to thank Mr. Harris uh, and the Friends of Deerfield for all the work that they've done. Um, I have no doubt of the importance of the artist or the artwork itself. Um, but the issues that the town and Stuart Saginaw have raised still have been not answered in terms of um, public benefit, either in ownership or in place. Um, so really, without knowing where it's going to be stored, uh, we can't guarantee public benefit. Um, and I think the ownership is less of an issue because I don't think it was a problem to transfer ownership to the town. It's if we don't have a way to store it or show it, then no matter how much money we put into restoring it, it doesn't provide a public benefit, in my opinion. Mr. Benson, you have a comment? Well, I might feel like I, I agree with many of the things that Sean has said, but I also understand the um, approach that Mr. Harris is saying. I don't know much about fundraising, but many professionals, and we have skilled professionals at this town, do feel that this is the right way to do a project like this and the ultimate goal is to make it be available for the public i am troubled by the religious nature of it but i think tim newman has answered those questions to my satisfaction mm -hmm. and um and i'm basically trying to take notes <laughs> <laughs> mr leone uh, i think everything's been said okay yep no. pretty much julie yeah, um, I'm I'm a more in a middle position, I think, in terms of, um, I guess, is it in the public interest? I think it's uh, it is in the public interest to have this uh, this painting go into this uh, first step of getting it uh, out of St. James Church, where it's just sitting uh, and not in any kind of uh, you know, preserved environment, I think there is a benefit from um, getting it into a conservatory place and have it being uh, looked at and taken care of, even if, you know, even in my mind, even if phase two doesn't occur, um, that sort of preservation aspect is, would be useful. Um, but I'm hearing the, the, uh, the, the general, um, view that it's premature at this point and we really need to know um, a further step of where it might be 
viewed by the public in Deerfield on a consistent basis um, to be able to to make a rec uh, to make in order to make a positive recommendation. So I see a lot of merit in the proposal. I just think that there's a couple of missing, or at least the one missing piece is the the um, the home floor. Maybe do I? Um, I, I'm in general agreement. Um, I think that a really strong case has been made, and I understand needing to show that the town is invested in this. Um, however, my concern is that we would open ourselves up to a lawsuit if we were to even support this small amount of money because it's not the amount, it's the use of public funds. And um, I, I would, I'm wondering if it's possible to table the application to our always special town meeting in the fall. And it sounds from what everything I've heard that there's only one place in Deerfield that this can go. And that's historic Deerfield. From from the what I've heard tonight, I could be wrong, but I have I don't know of any other places. Um, so I think that I guess so at this point, if it were up to me to actually vote vote, I would not recommend it, but I would suggest that um, Mr. Harris buy himself a couple of months to to get a signed piece of paper saying we will take this. It's got to you know be like a commitment that is really clear that we can hang our hats on because we're we are the stewards of the public money. That's me. So are you saying that, I mean, it sounds like there's two possibilities here. One is we can vote to recommend it or not, or we could vote to move it to town meeting in the fall. Am I hearing you right? Uh, well, I, I guess what I'm just saying is that uh, that's how, that I would recommend, if, if I were in the business of recommending, I would recommend that um, it be tabled to give the friends of Deerfield the time to come up with a site, a, a commitment from a site, at least. Because I, I think then we would be okay. But if we had to vote tonight, I would be gravely concerned that we would be opening up the town to a lawsuit um, if we approve it. So hearing that, Mr. Harrison, do you want us to table this to fall or would you like us to hold a vote tonight? I would like you to hold the vote tonight. Okay, thank you. Did you have something to say? Oh, I, I was just going to clarify that holding it for town meeting, special town meeting in the fall means that the CPC would consider it again, vote on it, vote on it, and it would go forward if it was recommended at that point right we're not sending it to special right no town meeting. that's right so if no one has any more comments i would make motion to close the deliberation and hold a vote or i would ask for a motion i should say motion just to close the deliberations yeah i would make the motion to close the deliberations second so julie seconded and so have a vote sean libby I vote nay. I'm voting vote. yes to close oh, the vote yes. <laughs> yes. Close the hearing. Ben. I vote yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Lily. Yes. And I say yes. And so now I'm going to need a motion one way or the other to recommend or not to fund the, the painting. I would make a motion that we do not recommend uh, moving this funding to town meeting. Do I have a second? I would second that motion. Okay, so we'll take a vote. John will be, you vote yes, not to recommend. Yes. Not to recommend, or vote, it sounds like you're saying. I vote not yes, not to recommend. And Ben? 
to I recommend or not? I vote no, not to recommend. In other words, I would recommend. You so you're voting to recommend. Okay. I'm voting to recommend. Right. I would vote yes to not recommend it. Oh, you're voting not to recommend it, and Julie. Oh gosh, <laughs> I, I I would say no to recommend. You were you voting to recommend or not? I'm voting to recommend. Okay, Lily. I vote yes to not recommend to town meeting. Okay, and I vote to not recommend. So what's the tally here? Four to two. Four to two. Three. So Six the to motion five. to not recommend. Four to two. Passes to not recommend. Does that make sense? We are not going to recommend this to go forward to town meeting. So can I have a motion to to uh, adjourn? I would make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Oh, but before we do, when's our next meeting? What's that? Lily, I'm sorry. When, when's our next meeting? Oh, I'm sorry. Our next meeting is next Wednesday at 8 p.m. because uh, we have a little bit of business to do. Thank you. Uh, we got that 8 p.m. next meeting. Right. Yeah. Julie, did you second? We haven't seconded the motion to adjourn uh, because we're just. Yeah. So now we. Now I'll second that. Now motion. we need a motion to second. A I'll second. second the motion to adjourn. Okay. Friday. Now those in favor, Sean. I'm in favor of Frank. Aye. Julie. Aye. Lily. Aye. And Kathy. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Thank you for all your hard work. And I'm sorry that this.